The big one is the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster. Disabled people are welcome aboard, but not in peak time. Hi, there's eight of us wanted to go on, but three are in wheelchairs. Can you help us out with access, please? Are you saying that we can't go on the ride at all? Not at the moment. Not. Why? Because they're moving a train every minute. They're they moving at one train every minute? Yeah. The only, the only way that they could take them would be to shut the whole ride down. Are you going to shut the ride for no. us to get on? You're not going to shut the ride for us to get on? No. Just to make it clear, we're not being allowed on the ride. Right, we're definitely not being allowed on this ride. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Right, OK, thank you. The system's set up to mitigate against disabled people again. So, so what do you want to do, kids? You can't right, come on. not letting us on. The Pleasure Beach is owned by Geoffrey Thompson. He's a big cheese in Blackpool with strong views on local affairs. Today, he's got the council in his sights. Is England thinking of abolishing the English tourist board? But Blackpool's thinking of abolishing the Blackpool tourist board. They're bad. Geoffrey's bending the ear of a local journalist. They can't give a reason. It's pure <laughs> Moscow dogmatism, based on old-fashioned Stalinism that went down a date years ago. Because they've got to kill off tourism. Yes, <laughs> well, but Stalin didn't care for tourism very much, and frankly, nor does the leader of the council. Put four in there, go right close, go in the queue as far as you can. Right into the queue. Right into the turnstile, right into the turnstile. The disabled group has decided on direct action. They block the turnstiles. We're going to stand here and wait, and we're not going to let people easily get by. So once these few people have gone, they'll realise that we're not letting anybody on at all, and they'll start to react and do something about that. The same group protested last year and were allowed on the big one when it wasn't busy. Now they're determined to ride whatever the time. Roger, I think we come right round and block. They're very naughty. The woman in charge is very naughty. Park manager Jim Rowland has to find a way of coping with them. Bird, this thing looks like it may get out of hand. I just can't slow this system down with three trains. I've told them we'll ride them at six o'clock. But they're, they're not interested in that. Cheers. Bye. That's all I want today. Unlike rival Alton Towers, the Pleasure Beach has no entrance fee. Instead, it makes its money by charging for the rides. To keep the cash flowing, they need to keep exciting the public with new thrills. The very latest white knuckle attraction is a 200-foot high tower. Victims are strapped into seats on the outside and then hurtled skywards at 80 miles per hour. It's Geoffrey Thompson's baby and he's first in the queue. It's always fun going on a new ride, I must say. Being the first guinea pigs, it's, you know, fairly exciting and just darn good fun. Are we ready? What's happening? Of course I'm going on it. Primary people in here, please. Right, OK, who are the primary...? The other guinea pigs, with Geoffrey, will be his son, Nick, oh, man, so and daughter, on, Amanda. Hey, go next to the oh, right. because I've got to go back to rehearsal. Yeah. Thank you. Don't get much fun. The thing is, will we be smiling when we oh, come back? I won't. I'll be going. Uh, <laughs> the ride, sponsored by Sony, has cost over £2 million and boasts state-of-the-art American space technology. Are we ready? Head against the back. Oh. Right. Are we ready? Is this meant to be tight? Oh, here we go. Space, oh, ready. Ready. oh, is it going or not? Oh dear, oh dear. Oh. oh, what's happening? Also going nowhere is the big one. The Pleasure Beach is losing money. The wheelchair blockade is keeping the public at bay and they're starting to get impatient. JR's number two, Keith Allen, hopes he can find a diplomatic solution. Now, it's not safe for you to ride. Well, change your system. You know the system. If you'd like to come back no, in this way, here, we can help you. We don't want to come back, we want to come down with the general right. 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 Jim, we need the police. They're sat on the floor in the turnstiles and we can't manhandle them, so the ride is effectively shut. How are you going to get them out? Well, we need the police, we can't touch them. 
these apartheid to disabled people. You run a system knowing that at popular times disabled people are discriminated from going on to it. These people are members of the general public. They've bought their tickets like everybody else. All those people have paid their money. They've got their tickets. You're depriving them. You're depriving them. You could just have two trains on and I'm sure you're away. I can't make you one when there's a free train service. And the reason I've explained, when there's a free train service, a system that is fair to everybody. Do you know what it's about, Keith? It's yeah. about money. That's what it's people all about. People don't matter. Get the people through and get the money off them. I'm offering you to come back later on when it's quieter. We we'll it's take a totally turn irrelevant. off. So that we can put you on in yeah, safety. But why should they have to come back at a different time to everybody else? Oh, we might be going. We might just be going. You can't look relaxed with your head back against the headrest. This is the trouble. Here we go. Ah, is this it? Yeah, here we go. Oh, what excitement. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Oh. No. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, God. Let's be honest, let's defeat them. I mean, at the end of the day... Keith's colleagues have come up with a plan to foil the demonstrators. They're going to sneak the able-bodied public onto the ride by smuggling them round the back. Jeffrey's right-hand man, Rick Zeckman, has turned up to add a bit of muscle. It's ridiculous. Can we obtain an injunction to keep them off the property? Because I'm asking them to come back later when it's quiet, I'm discriminating against them. I'm telling you, I have no time for people to break the rules to suit their own purposes. That's, right. That's what we're talking about here. No sympathy. It's a cat and mouse game. And talking of cats, here comes the uh, here come the pigs. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, and the Thompson family show no sign of liftoff. Right, are we ready? Wayne's got his thumb up. Oh, oh, it could be it. It could be it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What anticipation! Oh! Here. They'll take them right out down through the gate. Their behaviour is appalling. Yeah. It's aggressive and it's inappropriate. And they don't deserve sympathy. They're spoiling the family everybody else. I I'm said that. Not all. I've said all that. And we don't, we don't want them. Yeah. The two police officers who were, uh, yeah, to, be, to be fair, in the middle of it, have been speaking to me and Cheryl. Pleasure Beach have said they are not going to allow us on. That's no negotiation. But they, they actually can provide access for, for disabled people. They're choosing not to. That's more right. So they're choosing point. not to. That, right. That's how I perceive it. Yeah, anyway. I see it as well. They are acting on behalf of all disabled people. They are disabled activists, if you like. And I understand what they're doing. I don't appreciate what they're doing because it's involving me. But I do understand what they're doing. Straight off the plane from Acapulco come the Mexican high diving team. The show starts tomorrow, but compare Roland Patterson has a nasty surprise for them at the pool. 40,000 gallons of water have drained away through a rip in the lining. On Wednesday it was full, but when I looked yesterday, it isn't, so we think the water might have come back out again. Fortunately, a new lining has arrived, but with only 24 hours to go before the first show, the pressure is on. There's so much to do, and if we're going to be up and running tomorrow, it's going to be like a, a three o'clock in the morning job from my point of view to get everything right. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm picking up the people that we can, uh, that we will disperse. Is that what you, is that what people are saying or not? Going back to Guest Relations South now to give them a cash refund for the tickets that they can't use. 
and then they're going to leave. Yeah. But in the meantime, I have to go and speak to my superiors and get, arrange some sort of meeting so that we can discuss this in more detail and we can find some sort of resolution. Because it needs to be resolved. It does, it? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay, gents. Thank you. So resolved, uh, No, but we've come to uh, an agreement. Which is? They're going and we're opening. Get the sound back on. Get it all back to normal. Jim, they're all clear at Guest Relations South and they've now left the grounds. Copy that, Keith. Well done. He said, well done? <laughs> I've done something right. <laughs> The pool is now full, but the water is icy cold. With only four hours until dive time, Roland's got a problem. Obviously, the boiler probably won't heat it up to a, a sufficient temperature for them. Is, I mean, is there any portable system that we could hire that would, like, help boost it up? I doubt it. They're yes. Just, I mean, are they, are they suggesting they won't dive? If... But if it's too cold, they won't, because... I suppose, being fair to me, if you plunge your head into, like, 12 foot of cold water and you've come from 78 feet, it's, it's a bit of a shock to the system. OK, what we have to decide is what we do. We have five minutes to make a decision. Good. Do you understand? Yeah, I, un I understand yeah. the, the, the problem. The high diver wasn't going to be in the second round. The water is, is too cold. Right? I know. And we will try to do the, the show. The show as fast, fast as possible, OK? Go. JR, we're going to go for 1 o'clock um, and then make a decision after the 1 o'clock show as to whether we can do the rest. Is that OK with yourself? That's fine. Blackpool Council continue to be a thorn in Jeffrey's side. They've allowed another company to set up fairground rides opposite his front gate. He is psyching himself up for a confrontation. We have a sort of, I suppose you would say, a love-hate relations with Blackpool Council. They love us because we bring the people here. They hate us because they can't truly control us. And councils always love total control. That's the Sandcastle building and the corporation allowed all these tacky fairground rides right on Blackpool Promenade, which of course is completely against their own bylaws. But I suppose councils can break their own laws when it suits them. The Mexicans are warming up for their first show. They need to. The water's still too cold okay, and they've had everyone. no chance to rehearse. Have a good show. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. I'll see you downstairs. At the moment, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'll do the introduction and after that we just fly by the seat of our pants. I know roughly what's meant to happen, but hey, we could end up with egg in our face. But these guys, like, they're doing the dangerous bit. I just talk and they just go. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the world's greatest high divers. It's their second season here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. For anyone who would like an unrestricted view of the show, we have seating in the grandstand. Jeffrey has demanded an urgent meeting with the council leader. He wants him to take action against the rival fairground rides. Is this really what you want to see copied around the town when you're trying to clean up the town, try and make Blackpool a more respectable place so we can get millennium bids and all the rest of it? And you allow, on the west side of the tram track, most tacky fairground rides of the worst type. Honestly, you're letting yourselves down. Obviously, it's your opinion, expressed very forcibly, that that's all tat and all the rest of it. I don't think it is. Oh, you think that's what you'd like to see along the promenade in Blackpool? And you're very happy, Leader, with what you see there. I thought this was a subject that had been well discussed, and I don't think it was something we could usefully further well, discuss. Well, you should be leaders, leaders of style, leaders of architecture, city planning, you know. You're not leading the people of Blackpool if you allow that around. One member of the team will perform for you a high dive from 81 feet. The top platform 
the one just below the flagpole, is the equivalent of five double-decker buses piled one on top of the other. Ladies and gentlemen, could we have silence, please? Curtains of the sandcastle has got consent for leisure. Permits. That doesn't mean you can put amusement rides on it without getting planning permission. You need planning permission. You also need, under the terms of your own Blackpool Corporation bill, permission from the town council to put any form of trading west of the tram track. You're Land breaking your own laws, leader. You really are. You're expecting the town planner to be taken seriously in this town when he breaks categorically every rule that he enforces on anyone else. No, yeah, now, you can't do that yeah, with a straight face. That is an outrageous allegation. It's true. There's no truth in it whatsoever. Absolutely true. It is true. not true. Yes, we are breaking the same planning rules for the, the Suncastle as anyone else. I find it slightly fancy. If they want to put something really nice there, I'd be delighted. Savile Row wasn't famous for one tailor's shop, and we don't complain about opposition. <laughs> Say a very good evening and a warm welcome along to Bradfield Fresh Beach. Now it's time for the genuine Acapulco Olympic high divers getting the kit off this evening at 7.30. Don't miss out on the fun. Blackpool's famous illuminations are on and the promenade is heaving. Every day, 85,000 visitors from all over the world flock to see the lights. The local peddlers seize the opportunity to cash in on the Pleasure Beach crowds. But they're trespassing on Pleasure Beach property. JR's having none of it. Um, Ian, get yourself and somebody else down with you. We've got traders outside the gates. If you can't shift them, shut the gates. Get your head up! So they can clear this away from the gates. Just move it up. Get your head up, yo yo! The problem is this, they're illegal street traders. They're selling cheap imitation stuff. People buy it outside of our gates, then come back to us in a couple of weeks and say, look, I bought this off somebody at the Blackwell Pleasure Beach, and it's a load of junk in it. It's rubbish. Just move it the other side all night, you know what I mean? Get it shifted, let's go. <laughs> yo, yo, it's a pound, pal. They know they're not allowed to do it, and they just know it's a game. We chase them off, they come back, we chase them off. It's just like a regular thing. <laughs> We're just out here to try and earn a bit of money, you know what I mean? We're not doing anything wrong. Multi-millionaire company, we can't, can't even come out and take a couple hundred pounds. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden the gates are closed. Look at this, look at this side. Now see how busy it was before. Look at it now. Shame, innit? Not moving nowhere. Cheers, Jeff. Muppet. The divers limber up for the evening show. But there's another problem. They're being dazzled by the laser pens that the punters have been buying from the traders at the gate. Side of the main tower itself. On the main tower, there are three platforms. Security man Nigel is on red alert. The street traders still refuse to leave. It's how you've asked us to pay for the whole season, yeah. the seasons before, before yeah, so the You've done it, yeah. It's starting to get a bit boring when I start asking you 10, 20 times a night. You've just got some inconvenience for the general, which is what we don't want. Yeah. Right. Honey, yo, yo! Honey, yo, yo, you like a car there now! Come on, come on! I want the money back! For that. To make things worse for the peddlers, some disgruntled customers want their money back. What's the point in buying it and bringing it back straight away? I'm not taking the yo-yo back, that one. I'm taking the thing and not a sniff. I'll wrap it around you, bleeding neck in a minute, you're cheeky little sod. 
than guys that are trying to make an honest living and sign on the dole and draw social security. They're wonderful people. They take your taxes and my taxes and then sell that stuff and don't declare anything, don't pay any taxes, rob the people, and when the people come back, they're not here anymore. It's a wonderful system. Nigel thinks he's spotted the laser artist. Somebody's pointing a red laser at their eyes, right? So that's going to sustain an injury. We're going to come down and we're going to sort it out in the office, right? All right, don't cover this. But there are other laser saboteurs at large in the crowd. Backstage, one of the divers is getting into his fireproof suit for the show's climax, the Human Torch. This final dive you're about to see is a fire dive. A diver is being prepared who is having the cloak of his costume soaked in gasoline. At park security, the laser suspect is held in the cells. Right, can I just speak here? I'll tell you what your rights are it's my if you're in possession of this and you're actually using it. I don't care whether you shine me on divers, other public or whatever. I have the right to confiscate that until you leave these grounds. This is advice from the police. A diver diving from a height like that and that hits him and disorientates him. Tragedy. Tragedy, isn't it? Agreed? Well, no, that's cheated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vito will now present the Human Talk. It's really kind of quite emotional. I mean, it's a really silly thing to say, but it's like... 